Wait, Wait did, did everybody, everybody see that? Yeah, I see slash okay, DM. Gotta, it's a, it's that, a that's forward a splash, slash. Dude. The backslash, man. I'm, I'm yeah, trying to slash. I, I tried forward both. Slash. Forward slash. Forward slash W. Whisper oh. ODM. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a forward slash oh. W, so where the question mark is. Oh, okay. Did everybody see hello? No, 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 no. Because they just didn't do it right. I didn't do okay. it right. Nice. There you go. That it's works. a whisper. Right. So forward slash, so where the question mark is, a W, space, and then start typing in the name of somebody here like Kendrick or, well, not Kendrick, so I listen there. There you go. Perna, you got it. Kendrick, yep. you got it. Oh, Perfect. I'm good. This All is good. Cause nothing but problems, and I love it. That's right. So I got to listen for that nice little every time, so I know I'm looking for something here. Okay. Um, so that's so what you, what you guys doing now, Kendrick? Are you going to move ahead, Baird, Silas? Are you going to follow close behind? What's the? I, I know that the boys are going to want to go in, so I'm going to just start moving up front as I move my guy up front. Okay. So you start kind of plugging away, um, Kendrick. Uh, where are you going? Uh, I want to. I don't know. Is this a gate? Is this a fence here? Um, this right here is yes. That is an open gate. Well, let's sneak through it. All right. As you guys pass through here, a were pig attacks. No. Um, <laughs> that would be awesome. No, that's a were pig. Um, so on your on your left and right, indeed, those are those are like five foot wide braziers um, that are in those little alcoves right before the gate. Um, they are not emitting fire, but the coals that are in them are glowing like orange and red, like just. They're glowing like they're being burned, but the uh, when you're standing next to them, there's a little bit of warmth, but not a lot. You'd expect a lot more for the coals to be burning and making this much light. And Silas, for you, it basically gives you enough vision to be able to see normally when you're close to them, but as you kind of drift away, you may have trouble seeing. So you may want to have like a light spell at the ready. I think it's time to roll a marshmallow check. Um, I don't know. Uh, Silas, what do you think when you get up close to those braziers? What do you think when you see that? Or maybe even Baird, you might want to be curious about it if you if you think. Really, we're going to be mesmerized by fire? <laughs> well, my my guy is uh, proficient with all things Smith tools, so burning coals that aren't burning at the temperature they're supposed to. Mm-hmm. Seems yes. like something that would he he would find out of place. Yeah, and I as well. So yeah, yeah. that's true. As dwarves, you would probably find that kind of weird. So what do you think? You've got oh, a rogue, cool. you've got a wizard, and you got a a cleric. So let's dig into the. Uh... Shall I arcana check them? Sure. Yeah, I was I was about to make the same check myself. Ooh. Nice. Do Folks I even need are, to bother? <laughs> no, I think Silas has got it. Um, there is a kind of a similar magical working that's here as well. Um, you're not familiar with the spell, but you figure like, you figure if you sat here for a while and really studied this for like the next couple hours, you might be able to figure it out. But there is some kind of magic that's here that's keeping those things lit but not burning at the temperature they should. Okay. All right. Um, actually, with a 17, you notice one more thing. Um, there, at the base of these uh, uh, braziers, there seems to be kind of like a, a like a weird rime or frost that's around it. And if you kind of hold your hand close, you don't have to touch it. When you hold your hand close, you can feel cold. Hmm. Interesting. Cold fire. That's fantastic. <laughs> Nothing strange yeah. here at all. <laughs> all right, so let's uh, let's start revealing some more area here since you guys have started moving up. Uh, we'll go with this here. All right, so you guys move up, and you're starting to see a little bit more detail there. There's a oh, lock gate. gate. It's closed. Uh, there's a locked gate. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is pinging 
the, the Kendrick's board. basically pinging Let's himself. Go. Yeah, I ping myself trying to move myself. All right. So as you as you're moving, or how how are you approaching this? Because this is kind of opening up into a larger area. Uh, Again, it's it's kind of ten I, by ten. As always, I'm on my uh, sneaky tippy toes. All right. Is Kendrick going by himself, or are all you guys jumping in? I uh, I'm walk behind with my wand. Ready, I hate it when you I think set I have it up stick. like that. I hate it when you set it up like that because I'm gonna. I know that means trouble, and I know that <laughs> the freaking Baird is gonna put his foot in something. But if Kendrick's up there, Baird's gonna be up there too because that's his thing. Yes. Yeah. Why would you guys mistrust me so? That's so terrible. We've only because we've all had a turn. Other than Basha, we've all had a turn at DM at some point or another. We've all pulled this trick before. <laughs> Whoops. All right. You guys, so you guys are all going to go. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So you guys get up to the gate, and it is most indubitably locked. So, Kendrick, you want to you wanna, you wanna, you spin the wheel, Raggedy Man? Let's is spin this the wheel. a picking kind of a lock or a smashing kind of a lock? Yes. Is um, it a kind of well, any lock can it's be. Only a, it's only a gate. I mean, what kind of gate is it? Um, actually, it's a similar gate. The one behind you and the one that's in front of you are the same gate, same type of gate. Um, now that it is, uh, the gate is closed. Um, you're you're seeing like that the, the the lock itself is built into the gate. It, it's there's not another padlock that's here, but um, the lock here. When you're looking at it, it it's almost like Man, was there a drunk trying to use the keys on this thing? Because there's like scratch marks and scrape marks around the keyhole. It looks like part of the, um, uh, like the, the bottom part of the keyhole looks like it's got a huge deep gouge in it, oh, where good. somebody probably good. tried to use oh, a knife good. to get in through there. But the lock is still serviceable. It, other than the the huge scratches and, I mean, I know it's like hey, it's like somebody was just drunk off their butt trying to get into this thing. And just mangling it awfully, but the quality of the lock is such that you can tell it still is functional. It can still be picked. All right? Somebody tell me I can't pick this lock. Come on. I think you can. There's no way you could pick it. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And that was so, in character. Under, was that? Your second under your second skill, you have the thieves' tools there that you can go ahead and. I do. There it is. Team's tools. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh my goodness! That is. Not just... only did I pick it, but I just looked at it funny, and it opened. <laughs> so what does it what does it look like when? Because I think this is the first time maybe we've seen Kendrick pick a lock. What does it What does it look like when he does this? <laughs> What do you mean? What does it look like when he does this? Yeah, I mean, like, does he get a certain face on, or does he like, what kind? What's your tools look like? What kind of tools are you using? I'm using a a a bent rod, flat steel rod that's bent, and then I'm using a little pick there, and basically what it is is it's a it's a you know you got to grab all the little latches. Because these are not tumblers; these are latches. You gotta grab them all, and then you turn, and then you get that sweet, sweet look of satisfaction after you crack that lock open. Like, oh yeah, I'm glad I learned this. All right, Baird and Silas, you're looking on as uh, as the master works, and as he's just, taking this just lock. Kind of, I'm just kind of rolling my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> But Baird, you know what? The interesting thing is for you, as a cleric, there's these moments of of prayerful joy that you get when you're when you're lifting yourself up to to Morden, and you're seeking knowledge, and all of a sudden this something just comes over you, and you feel like, oh, I totally have it. That I've just had a an epiphany, and you see that similar kind of look in Kendrick's face. And you realize that this kind of life that he has right now, this choice, choice, this path that he's gone down, it's who he is. So now it's a matter of how best can Morden use this type of tool, and how can that be a part of him and still be that lawful good dwarf that you want him to be. So something to think about as you're seeing that. 
Um, Chaotic. I'm good. seeing all of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's your friend, and you've been really keeping an eye on him. You know, that's that's the kind of thing that you're going to kind of develop. Well, lacking the uh, the animation to make this gate open, we'll just call it open. We'll um, say it's open. <laughs> yeah, we'll say it's open. Um, based on where you guys are at, uh, Kendrick, I'm going to need a reflex save. And Baird, I will also need one from you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> reflex save. Yeah. Was that a deck sta- a deck save? Um, actually, yeah. You go to your, well, actually you go to your core stats, and you core should stats. have um, yeah. Do your deck save. That's correct. Deck save. Do it. Oh. Yes. Ooh, very good. Point. Very good. Kendrick, I want you to check. say it with me now. Check for traps. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, um, Silas, you're kind of standing in the back corner. You've got your wand at the ready. And Kendrick steps forward, deftly opens up this lock. Um, but as he springs that lock, there are little, uh, uh, I want to say, like, kind of... It looks almost like cockaburs from the uh, cockaburs, you know, like those little birds that come out of plants out in the tundra, that come springing out from both sides of the uh, of the oh, gate yeah. housing, I guess we call it, and they s- spring outwards. Uh, there's probably like maybe three to a side, and they basically it it seems like somehow. You guys are able to kind of dodge off of it. Um, it's, most of it just kind of blinks off of your armor, Baird. But as it hits the stone, you guys look down, and it's starting to kind of burn into the stone, and it creates little divots and then stops. And you look into the little holes, and the little cockaburs are gone. But um, it left little burn burn marks in the stone. Well, I can only say the thing that you can only say, which is, that was close. And I, I just want to give him just one good, like, <laughs> older brother-y kind of slap upside the back of the head. <laughs> what? Did, did, you, did you pick that lock? That was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's true. It was, it was great lock picking. Yeah, and we almost died, that's all. That's, that's no big deal, no problem. <laughs> Not a problem at all. It's all good. All right, so... You guys open it up, and on either side of the uh, um, that little gate housing on the opposite side are matching braziers that you saw earlier in the tunnel. And uh, let's go ahead and reveal some more of the map here. Come on. Roll 20. Agree with me. Agree with me. And there you go. So you guys now see we a little bit further into the tunnel. Maybe we should. Maybe we should I check out. I have no idea. What do you guys want to do? I'm cocky, but I'm not stupid. I want to check for tra- me, more tracks. <laughs> Say it with me, lad. Check <laughs> for traps. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how are you guys proceeding forward? You can go ahead and move your move your icons. Why don't you guys move it like maybe three blocks at a time, like 15 okay. feet, basically, just so I can kind of gauge where you're going. So Kendrick's oh, wait, moved. Where's, where's the... Uh, hold on, let me find the ruler. <laughs> 15 feet? <laughs> 15 feet, yeah, there you go. Right, I don't know that ruler is not, the ruler's not quite accurate because I'm going off of the stone, the stones that are there. Each of those oh, are five feet. Oh, okay. So yeah, just yeah. kind of work your way like up three stones. That'll work. Watch out. Okay, Silas, are you going to move up or did you already move? I did move. You did? You did. He was way back in the boonies, so... (laughs) Hey, man, I don't need to be up close to shoot somebody in the face with fire. (laughs) That's true. Quarter of the night right there. It just sort of happens with this guy. The basic philosophy of Silas Sylvan Smith. I don't have to be up in their face to shoot them with fire. (laughs) I love that stuff, man. It's hilarious. And then then that star comes up, the more you know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, gosh. I love that stuff. Okay. Uh, Let's see here. One thing I want to check here. Nothing at all. 
Perception check? Perception yeah. check? Perception check? Perception sure, check. why the hell not? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Woohoo! Rolled an 18. Nice. Alright, what did I see? What did I see? Alright, you, you don't Walls see anything. Around the, what? Didn't see anything? Oh. No, I'm kidding. Alright, along the flagstone, you're seeing more of that kind of... Uh, those tracks, like the goblin tracks and stuff, similar number. It's not like all of a sudden there's like a hundred more. It's just that there's, it's following this. So it seems that they've gone past that locked gate. So. I would yeah. also recommend following the goblin footprints. Because mm -hmm. if there are traps, they probably know it. Unless you come up against a set of tracks that stops for no good reason. Then I think, I think it's probably a good idea to avoid stepping on bad things. Now we're baking with Bisquick. Nice work. Okay. You don't need to check for traps when you're awesome. You just dodge what comes on. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, what AFL said. <laughs> oh, reaching into the lexicon. All right. I like it. Okay. Um... Let's see here. We are moving forward there. All right. Um, are we going to have Kendrick, or are you going to move ahead? Oh, uh, yes, he will. One, two, three. Wait. One, two, three. I feel like I'm playing Candyland. Okay. Okay. And, and another check? I'm, um, I'm going to follow him under the, the auspices of I'm following Goblin Footprints. Okay. Uh, are we uh, are we doing anything kind of kind of sneaky like or anything or what's of course I am. Bear doesn't. I am. <laughs> Baird's back there tromping. I'm like yeah. sneaking around. Bear, Bear doesn't know the meaning of the word sneak. Uh, all right, and that's following along with Baird. I mean, the idea that he isn't going to is he going to consider possibly kind of like what Silas is doing is he going to consider maybe Kendrick needs to go first and just to kind of be a little oh yeah sneaky? oh yeah no he he appreciates a good scout but he doesn't right. even bother trying to, to hide it because he knows better <laughs> okay and I'm willing to roll a, a stealth check every every move so you know, I don't know how DM wants to roll it, but you know that's how I roll. I don't know how I don't know how you do it back downtown, but this is how we do it. All right. So what are we rolling? What are we doing? Nobody's moving. Just hold on, hold on a second there. Okay. Um, Beard. I'm gonna shut you're seeing uh, you're seeing Kendrick kind of move up, move up a little bit, and uh, he's hitting the corner. And uh, let's see here. How have you roll? Uh, have you roll a perception check there, Beard? Alrighty. Not persuasion. Perception. All right. Okay. So so basically, I, I'm gonna do kind of like they do in those army movies, where I just like hold the hand up and stop everybody. Okay. Except um, the one dude's in front of you. Oh yeah, I'm dead. I'm dead. Uh, <laughs> Kendrick, actually, you'll probably hear you'll probably hear just with your passive perception alone, you'll probably hear him kind of shift a bit suddenly. So you look back. Yeah, even if he doesn't hear the noise, he'd hear me, because I'm not even being kind of stealthy. Mm -hmm. And basically, basically what I'd do is, because of the fact that I'm, again, not even kind of stealthy, I'm just going to kind of signal to Kendrick to take a look ahead, because there's at least one, one shady thing going up. There, there's something clearly moving around up there in front of us. You hear it again, but this time... Wait, what? Okay, I immediately check it out. Okay. 
<laughs> you uh, you look down at your. I'm hip. not going to share that yet, but I'm going to tell you that the sound is not from in front of us, and I'm going to look into this. I'm going to let okay. Jeff do his thing. All right. Uh, let's see here. No, no, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. I'm, I, um... I'm immediately going to go into my pocket and pull out a little jar. Mm -hmm. What do I see, Jeff the DM? <laughs> well, I, when I buried Ironborn, you see a, uh, a dead, uh, what is that, a dryad? Is that what that is? It was, the, the way the, uh, the oddities table put it, it is a dead sprite or fairy. A sprite, yeah. There's a dead sprite in there. Um, Bear kind of eyes it a little bit, holding it up and the... Uh, the brazier light that's coming from behind you kind of casts uh, an odd shadow across the glass, but as you raise it up a little bit higher, it catches the full light. Um, it's twitching. Oh my goodness, the dead fairy isn't dead. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. It's mostly I gotta, dead. I gotta, it's I gotta mostly open. dead. <laughs> no, don't open it. Just shake it to see if he's actually alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna crack that thing open. We're gonna see what's what. Okay, you. Uh, so, what does the jar look like in Barrett's I, world? I imagine that it's. It literally looks like an old sample glass, like the kind of things that you'd see in the old alchemy shops, like a beaker with a, a giant cork stopper. Okay, that's what I'm thinking too. Like with a little label that says fairy. Dead? And maybe and maybe in Latin the uh, you know the, the genus of the fairy. Is that it? Le fairy morte. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. All right, so you open up the uh, open up the jar, and there's <laughs> for the, for those of you who have only watched this session, uh, you might not know that. We all rolled for one weird oddity, and Baird's was a dead fairy in a jar. Our DM is apparently making that a part of this game now. Go on. <laughs> Why not? So, all right. So Baird, you uh, you open up the jar, and you pull that uh, pull that uh, stopper out, and around you, like well, like near your I don't know how close are you holding it to your face, like when you open it up. I was, well, I obviously. What's your I position it, when you do it? Obviously, I check it out like this, but I kind of, I kind of pull one of these, because it, because it's dead. It's always been dead, and it's sure. tapping on glass suddenly. In case you're uh. wondering, that's what the sound was. It was as if something was tapping from the inside of something glass. So I'm literally gonna like point it away from me and just kind of pop. <laughs> <laughs> and a new moon crate Wait, is created. <laughs> what are you doing? Open it, man. Just talk to it through the jar. No, no, no. Nope. You're opening. <laughs> we're, we're just going for it. All right. He opens this, and I don't know who's in whose direction. Maybe in the direction of the wall or something like that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not pointing it at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Fairy cannon. <bam. laughs> um, so you you open it up, and the only thing that happens is there's. At least to your your olfactory and maybe whoever it might be nearby. I have both of you guys, all three of you, smell it. It's like a peppery smell, like fresh ground pepper. Fairy jerky. Like. Huh. <laughs> Fairy jerky. That'd be that'd be a bit of salt there too. Uh, let me try that. You've done <laughs> killed one of the famous salt lick fairies. <laughs> uh, um. <laughs> all right. What if what if I bring the fairy? You said that it was kind of tapping, like as we were walking through. I kind of want to see if, if well, first let me try talking to it. Like hello. <laughs> Nothing. It Nothing. I want to bring it over towards the brazier. I want to see if like the weird magic that's lighting the fire does something to the fairy. Okay. So you move your move your uh, your you stuff. No, you don't have to. That's okay. It's okay. We're there. I'm gonna. I'm, there we go. Telling our brains. So you move over to the, to the brazier. You pass through that little gate or close to that gated area, and you're you're kind of just kind of holding it over there. 
you notice that along her wings, um, there's a bit of frost that kind of starts to gather. And her little tiny back, because I mean, she's like, you know, she's a little thing. So along her tiny back, there's, it almost kind of looks like there's a bit of a spasm. And then as you move the jar away, it kind of stops. All right, I'm actually this is, I'm gonna do it because I'm I'm hoping this is a good fairy and not the one that kind of eats my face. Uh, I'm I'm actually gonna like kind of slide her out onto my hand and literally like put her on one of the coals. Okay. Um. As you you, you as you kind of it, it, as she slides out of the jar and onto your hand, one thing you're noticing is that since you've let's say two days after you somehow captured this fairy and we may have to go into how or the sprite how we need to go into a little bit how I, you I always it. imagined when we, when we rolled this out I always imagined that he kind of had it like from a curiosity shop like yeah. he, he got it somehow like it was Perfect. already a dead fairy okay and okay. he just for some reason picked it up because he thought it was interesting good <laughs> That works. That is messed up, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is the label said dead question mark, fairy, <laughs> on the bottom. No. Um, so <laughs> so you, you spill it out onto your hand. Now, the thing that you've noticed that since the day you bought it, that curio shop down south, she has been, it, it's bright rigor mortis. You know the thing is right been like, because because you know, like, and, and I here's here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna totally justify this and not make it weird. Uh, Baird is a cleric of Moradin. His whole quest is specifically to go out and learn things. One, he'd never seen a fairy before. Two, it would it would be a good science experiment. And three, he could dissect it to learn things. Dissect it. <laughs> Okay. When the when the well, fairy I mean, wakes up, why don't you tell her that? that yeah, I'm not gonna tell her that. Outside. By the way, I thought you'd be an interested <laughs> science experiment. No, I'm not gonna tell her that. Hey, can I pull a wing off? Is that yeah. Throw back. I was gonna yeah. tack you onto some some to a, a picture frame <laughs> later. Put you on a put you on a mantle. You know. Yeah. I'm gonna have a butterfly collection. Um, yeah. But no, but that that would that has I mean. Yeah, that makes sense as to why he would buy it. I don't just want to say that I had this thing because we rolled on a table. That would be sure. why Baird would buy it. <laughs> no, I get you. I got you. Okay. All right, then. So you, the thing you notice is that this, it, it no longer has a state of sprightly rigor. It's actually limber. So it just kind of like, just kind of flops down onto your hand. Little wings kind of spread out. Um... And it you 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 move it over to the coals, and Silas, what are you doing while while he's uh oh sorry I just I just put you just, sorry. Uh, okay I'm good just a, you're about to sneeze oh yeah, go for I'm it fine <laughs> no I'm good I'm good we're uh I'm just kind of watching with fascination I I do know a little bit about fairies in the Fey okay I, I but I assume I've never experienced anything quite like this. Not quite. I mean, you could definitely you know delve into some of your uh, some of your wizardly not knowledge and see if that might bring up something. Sure. So if you want to do that, you can definitely do so. Is that arcana or nature? Um, no do nature. Role, so it doesn't. Do, it doesn't yeah, matter. it doesn't matter. I mean, let's work with nature, and then if you want to do an arc arcana to see based off of that role, if it does anything big for you. Oh. That's oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, based on your experience with the natural realm, Silas, uh, creatures do not return from a state of rigor like this. I mean, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Maybe once or twice, <laughs> Baird is Baird kind of like you had to you. dig deep into the knowledge for that. <laughs> <laughs> once or twice, Baird's kind of brought the jar out as a curiosity. You know, he's maybe you know having a bit of ale and he's like studying it and thinking and contemplating like Baird does. You know, because he's Ever so often, he is, he wants to find some knowledge, and like you said, Baird, one day you're gonna work up the work up the knowledge base and the maybe a little bit of courage to actually dice this thing up. But uh, so yeah, you've seen this before, and but you've never seen a creature become un unpetrified after being dead for so long. So there you so go. I'm, I'm seriously gonna try and like gently like nudge her. 
and just be like, like, hello, little one. Hello. Are you okay? okay. You, you put her onto the coals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, around the spot where you lay down the uh, the sprite's body, um, there's, there's again, that kind of frost and rhyme starts to kind of break, uh, kind of pu- pool outward like a ripple. And then it stops like maybe like a couple inches in an aura around her, like a circle around her. And that whole thing is like a disc of frost. And you see it kind of go over her limbs, her wings, her body. And her body just kind of twitches. It's just kind of like a, I don't know, it's a disconcerting thing to see, actually. And as a as a cleric, I mean, you've you've been blessed to witness a, a, a a raising once or twice, where you know somebody in your in your home temple, you know, brought in a, a fallen hero and was able to bring them back to to life. And you've witnessed that before, and it was nowhere near anything like what you're seeing right now. Well, yeah. I mean, how many times do you get to see a a long dead fairy suddenly <laughs> come to life with ice? I mean, I'm not expecting this to be normal. Right, but I mean, if there was any thoughts in your mind that this might be some form of a resurrection or a raising spell, that sort of thing, that's in this thing, mm-hmm. it's not that. It seems like it's being, like the little sprite is being infused with some kind of energy. Okay. So, so like, is it, just, is if is you there, guys both have... Was it oh, this dead this has now? got zombie sprite written all over it. Um, that's what um, I'm thinking. This thing's going to come back and bite me, literally. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, is it like currently in this, or does it look like it kind of whatever was gonna go into this thing has already gone into this thing? Um, I don't know. It's hard to tell. You want to do a you want to do an insight roll? You want me to do insight or arcana or both? Uh, you can do arcana, and then you can draw insight from that. Silas, if you want to do the same, go for it. Okay, here's the arcana roll. Yay! Whew. Smoking. Yep. Both you With that roll, do you need me to do the insight roll to follow that up, or? Uh, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, here's what I'll tell both of you guys. Um, I expect, you know, Baird, you you knocked it out of the park. Silas, you've got a good eye on this as well. But it does seem that this rhyme, this kind of frosted rhyme that's at the base of these razors, is somehow seeping into the dead sprite. Now, the sprite isn't necessarily being instilled with life at this point. It seems like it's almost like um, like <laughs> like a windsock. You know, like it, there's so <laughs> much wind that's being buffeted on this wind or the, or a weather vane or something. There's so much wind being passed through it that it can't help to jerk back and forth and stuff. But because of the shape of it, it's attuned to respond to that wind. So a similar effect seems to be happening here, that the sprite's body, whatever state it was in inside that jar, is responding to the energy that's given off by this brazier. Um, And because of the role that you guys have in between the two of you, I mean, I don't know how you guys are sharing information as you learn it. I mean, let's talk about that. Baird, Silas, you're both kind of looking at this. How are you guys comparing notes? Well, I mean, they, yeah, we're just talking about this now. I would, I would, I would straight up say something along the lines of, "I've never seen anything like this." Okay. Um. Okay, and then Silas, you're also kind of pretty open about what you're seeing as yeah. well. Okay. Um, you both come to the conclusion that it looks like there's some form of necrotic energy that's coming out of this. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him to move away. Okay. Um, Baird, I, since you got that 19, I'm going to have you go ahead and do an insight roll. Okay. Okay. Oh, that's... Ugh. Mm, okay. Um, you yeah, got a choice. I'm... You got a choice here. You can be fearful of what's happened to your little dryad or you could potentially take this as a learning experience and maybe study this later. Uh, I'm one, I'm going to take it as a learning experience because I am a cleric of Moradin, a D20 
deity who's particularly interested in learning new things. Also because I'm, I don't fear necrotic stuff because bad necrotic energies, I, I kill them. Okay. Good necro I, But I have spells that are technically necrotic. Very so true. Not, not all nec necrotic spells necessarily end up bad. Some of them actually end up helping. Hmm. So, and with that particular gonna... with that particular insight, you actually glance over at Kendrick and you think about him picking that lock, and you're like, "Hmm, interesting." All right. So, we, what are you going to do with our our friendly energized dry, uh, sprite? I I am going to uh, as as delicately as possible with my gloved hand, mind you. Uh, <laughs> Pick, pick her up and put her back in the jar and stop her that thing back up. Okay. All right, as you do that and as you pull her away from that, there's there's still kind of like a frost on the inside of the glass, and you actually almost feel like a condensation on the outside where there's like kind of a water coming through. But just, just a couple beads here and there. But um, as you pull her away, that energy stops, and she stops twitching, and that's the end of it. So so basically, yeah, okay. So it doesn't come with her. It's just okay. I think. So I what think do you I think? Like when you when you're like, what do you, what do you say? Like, do you talk it over with Silas a bit? I mean, Kendrick, are you back over where they are? I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty much I'm pretty much going to say it's localized magic, yeah. because it seems like the farther we take it away. It, it is no longer attuned. So the braziers are very much localized magic. This is not, you know, willy-nilly excess energies floating about this tunnel. This is this is quality stuff. Uh, I haven't moved. I am uh, uh, strangely curious and disgusted, and that's awesome all at the same time, but I'm not getting anywhere near it. Are you superstitious of that kind of stuff? No, no, I just, I, you know, I'm not a spellcaster. I, I, I think it's, uh, you know, you just don't mess with the necrotic stuff. You kill things so you don't have to deal with them again, right? right. Okay. So. I sense. am sort of inherently unhappy with this. I don't yeah. like death. Me too. This I is like not life. And uh, the the necrotic energy bugs me a little bit, so I'm, you know, I understand that's his gig, but I still don't like it. Right. Okay. All right. That uh, that totally makes sense. Speaking of necrotic, let's go kill something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready to move on? Yep. Sounds like. Okay, Kendrick. So you're peering around the corner here, and. Let's see here. You can see oh, it, down to the end of a tunnel. And in case anyone's curious, the necromantic spell that I have is Spare the Dying. It's technically a necromantic oh, spell. Oh, that's right. Spare the Dying? Oh, okay. What well, did well, somebody case. think of dying? <laughs> should I roll hey, something? Just, uh, for future reference, just because I don't like it doesn't mean I won't appreciate it. <laughs> I won't accept <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, so who's? What do we have going on now? Um, I think we're still letting Sneaky Sneaky Boy go forward. Yeah, right. Sneaky Sneaky Boy. I moved my three. Let's see. One, two, three. Okay. All right. All right. Stop there for a second. Because you are hearing. Let's see here. Got that, got that number, got that number. All right, you're starting to hear, like, kind of a scrabbling sound, like something kind of scratching at the stone or, or shifting a bit, and it's, like, maybe 10 feet ahead of you. Okay, so... Look for bones. Roll. Uh, you can do you could do a perception check if you want, sure. Oh. Nice, okay. You are hearing... Let's see here. No, no. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 
you are hearing this. <laughs> dun dun dun. <laughs> There you go. You get that, Kendrick? Yep. All right. So what do you do? What do you do? I put my hand up because I hear something. And I signal the bear to get up here. I don't move any farther. I just signal the bear. <laughs> All right. Okay, the bear comes up there. All right, bear. Um, Solid, you're moving there. Okay. All right, bear. Uh, roll a uh, roll a perception check. And this is what that's kind of basically what you see. There's like a there's a larger stone. It's maybe raised up like two steps. Is that a big a, brazier? Yeah, it's a big brazier. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> the bringing back to life brazier oh, has just bigger. gotten bigger. Look at Braird, man. She's a little. Wow. Right. That's why I brought him forward. <laughs> that's why he's there. That's why he's there, folks. Okay. Um. No. No, Kendrick. It's, uh... Did that not pass through? I mean, you are that's what you heard. Did it not type through correctly? Oh, yeah, okay, I hear it. Did you play a sound, too, then? No, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, okay. that's somebody just else. The sound, that's just the sound effects there. Oh, okay. Alright. Got it. All right, and from your perspective, it sounds like and Baird, you actually you got this one too. You nailed it. So let me. Uh, but Baird speaks like, Goblin. Yeah. From here, here. And from here, you're hearing something. And it sounds like. Sounds like goblins. Well, if we haven't gotten eye contact, I kind of want a little our, our stealthy friend to at least get eyes on whatever's making the sound. Yes, let's do that. Okay. Uh, well, each of you guys click on your your uh, character avatar there and roll initiative. Should I roll stealth? Uh, you can after you roll initiative. That'll be fine. Oh, boy! <laughs> I'm not going first. <laughs> All right. Kendrick, did you add? Did you click on your icon before you hit the, your initiative or no? Oh, no, I didn't. All right, hang on a sec. Let me see if I can drag that over. Sorry. Right. Uh, I was not paying attention well. to the rules. I'll re-roll. Uh, no, that's okay. We'll keep you there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep you there. All right. So because I'm obviously really, last, uh, second, second, right? Yeah, because you guys did roll an excellent initiative, and well, not just an excellent initiative, but you also rolled an excellent perception. Dun -dun -dun. You now have something that's attacking you. All right, so let's uh, let's get these guys. I'll start rolling their initiatives. Oh, we never got eyes on. It doesn't matter now. We can see, right? Yeah, you can see them now, because they shifted enough to where you're like, holy crap, there's alcos right there. Oh, look at these rolls. Oh man. All right, let's make this happen. All right, I should have all of them there. There they go. Show his nameplate. All right. Uh, let's see here. Let me make sure I order these up. Descending order. Okay. Um, so Goblin, Goblin One comes out, and he sees, he sees uh, Kendrick here. 
and he is going to go ahead and move in for an attack. And let's see here, Goblin number two, he sees Baird, and he's like, ah, oh, crud. I'm going to have to attack him too. And you hear them I like... I get that all to... the time. <laughs> I get that all the time. These guys, like, <laughs> seriously... I mean, come Man, on. Man, look at that guy. I'm going to have to attack him. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to have to be the way it is. So let's uh, let's bring up some music here. All right. So now we got a little music going on. We've got the uh, turn order going. We're all set to go. So now it's up to it's up to our disgusting little goblins. So see now I have to actually navigate the stinking little character sheet things, and that just makes me crazy. All right, first attack. This one is going on Mr. Kendrick. Okay. And why isn't it landing? There it is. Okay. Oh, Unfortunately, it looks like that is a hit. AC. Yeah, AC is 14, is that right? Or what's your AC? No. My AC is 14, yep. All right. So that is going to be a hit. So I'm going to roll damage here. Oh, bummer. <laughs> That's going to hurt. All right. Wait, what did you roll? It should be showing up uh, doing a delay. Oh, there we go. Seven slashing. All right. Oh, and it was got... a critical? No, 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 no. It's just it's oh. rolling that second dice for some reason. I don't know why. So I'll but, probably but just do a manual roll from now on. It was a. It's green. It's green. Um, yeah, it's, but that's a, yeah, but it's it's only in the case that it might have been a exploding die. But they get a minus one because of their strength. So, all right. So that's seven points on you there, Monsieur Kendrick. So keep How do track. I keep track of this? Uh, let's see here. You temp can go hit. to. There's temp hit points. Yeah, you can actually put that in there if you want. You can. If you click on if you click on your guy. And you click on one of the little circles, it'll let you put a number in it. I'm gonna do it on bear just for for. Oh yeah, I know how to do that. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Seven. Like that. Yeah, that works. That'll work. You can do it that way. Wait, where'd he go? Seven. You gotta hit enter to save it. Yeah. There make sure you go. save it. Okay. Goblin number two. Is going after uh, going after our our friend Baird. All right. I'd love to say that my armor class was much better, but it's only kind of. <laughs> Where are you at? You're at a you're at a sixteen, a... aren't you? Let's see here. Maybe I need to turn off the animatics. All right. He takes a swing at you with his, uh, he misses. With his raging scimitar and misses. That's correct. All right. Uh, let's see here. Next up is the... Hey, it's those darn goblin archers. But Silas, you get to go at the same time, though. Do I have a shot on the goblin archer? Uh, he's going to move out almost simultaneously, and he's going to shoot, but he's going to have uh, Dickens of a time trying to shoot past his friends. But yeah, you could, you could hit him, you could hit him, yeah. Oh, I don't like that four roll. <laughs> oh. All right. So, what are you throwing? Are you throwing a firebolt? Yep. All right. Firebolt, uh, firebolt blazes at the uh, at the. Uh, Hapless goblin, but unfortunately he's able to sidestep that thing, and it ends up impacting back here along the brazier, which actually causes an odd little combination of greens and blues to emit from the fire. Even though your fire bolt is what, it's probably like an orange and red, or what color is your fire bolt? Yeah, fireish. 
Fire-ish. <laughs> so it has like an odd reaction. It has an odd reaction with that brazier. It actually starts turning the like a strange kind of bluish green color when it hits that brazier. So all right. So the goblin is uh, he's going to take a shot as well. And I'm just going to roll like this here. And because he is shooting into melee. Wait, which goblin? The four. Okay. Uh, it is this gentleman here has taken a shot, and he is actually targeting Baird because he is at a particularly good angle for it. So let's see. Yep. Yeah, we, uh, Twelve. All right. So you, an arrow comes clanging off of your shield, there, Baird. As you see a goblin sneak out of the alcove uh, just a few feet ahead of you. Um, all right, so now we are at Baird. All right, well, seeing as there's a guy who came up and right in my face, he's going to get hit with a warhammer. All right. And Kendrick, you can also go as well. I realize you're at nine. I should remember that. Yeah, Ooh, nice. Not yes. a crit. Not, Not a, crit. a crit, but it still is definitely a hit. So even at a disadvantage, you would have still had him. Oh, come on, be the five. Be the five. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we do it, kids. That's how you do it downtown. That's what I'm telling you. All right, so the goblin in front of you right here, he just goes squish. So he is... He's dead. Right there. Uh... Kendrick, you get to attack. You are also going to hit. And you roll an extra d6 because you have a partner there with you um, that's five feet from combat. So you get to roll your sneak damage. So roll, roll the 1d6. Uh, well, let's see if you hit. Oh, yeah, no, you did hit. Yeah, that's right. So actually, you can. What's your damage on your uh, your short sword? Uh, it's one d six. Four. It's one d six. So your short 1D6, sword. One d six. Yeah. So yeah. So just roll two d six. I'll take that. You don't have a strength modifier, right? Roll two d six. Nine. Oh, come on. No, actually, that's enough. You end up slashing this character. This goblin is also dead. As you cut him across the face. All right. So that leaves that leaves us back to the top of the round, and that brings us all the way down to the goblin archer, who is going to withdraw. He sees his friends. He sees his friends, and he's like, "Oh my gosh." I don't think so. I'm going to say Silas says no. <laughs> That's right. You guys do go simultaneously, so yeah, that'll work. Okay. Take him out. Silas hits. Firebolt. Big numbers, big wham numbers, no whammies. Two oh. damage. <laughs> what? Is that even possible? <laughs> All right, so the fireball leaps from his fingers and ends up singeing his tail, his disgusting little green tail, as he uh, he turns to withdraw. So all right, okay. Uh, what do you guys want to do next? That's probably a good spot to pause the episode, isn't it? Yeah, so you guys have actually kind of that goblin just runs take Terran butt off the off the screen, and uh, decides that it's just not worth staying there for the time being. I mean, we did basically make short work of both his friends. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay, so let's phase out the music and let's go ahead and take a break, and uh, we'll come back and uh, well, actually, we'll come back to the next episode as we uh, continue down the uh, dungeon. All right, guys. Well, uh, lots of fun. Uh, we'll uh, all you guys out there in the interwebs enjoy this episode, and uh, we'll have a new episode coming up, hopefully in less than a month. Uh, <laughs> so we'll we'll discuss scheduling here shortly. All right. So have a great time, you guys. We'll talk to you later. <laughs>